Hi guys, it's Ben Heath, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create Google Ads call extensions. Now, if you're running Google Ad campaigns and you want your prospects to be able to call you, it's an absolute no-brainer to get call extensions set up. In fact, we often find that the leads that come through call extensions, where a prospect can just directly call you from your Google Ad, they don't need to click through, come to your website, they're often the highest quality prospects. Firstly, you don't have to worry about actually getting in touch with those people like you would if they filled out a contact form on your website, let's say. Um, they're already on the phone with you, so that box is already ticked. And secondly, the people that go ahead and call straight away, those are often the ones that are most keen. They're most in need of your service, of your product. So they're fairly, uh, they're not very price sensitive and often quick and easy to convert. So really high quality prospects. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get them set up. So I'm here in a Google Ad account and to set this up, I've gone into Ads and Extensions and then selected Extensions. Now I'm gonna click on this little plus and we're gonna go ahead and select Call Extension from the menu. And this brings up, um, very familiar ad extension creation window. You can see exactly what it's going to look like on the right hand side, which is fantastic. And then we can go through and we can put in the various details. So first thing you wanna decide is whether you want this call extension to be added to the account campaign or ad group level. With call extensions, you're very rarely going to be adding at the ad group. Um, what we're typically going to do is either assign at the campaign level or just the account level. If you're a relatively small business and you just have one phone number that you want people to be able to contact, then account is absolutely fine because that's going to cover all your campaigns, all your ad groups, all your services, products, etc. If you've got, say, different departments or different people that manage different services, for example, so let's say you fit solar panels to roofs as one service and you also um, set up electric charging stations at people's houses, you know, that you've got those two separate services, for example, then you might want to set up your call extension at the campaign level and have one phone number for one service and one phone number for another service if that's how your business is structured. So typically going to be a campaign or account and that's how we do it. Then the next thing to, to select is to enter in your phone number. But first we need to get the right country. Now this is really important because Google will disable, uh, they will disapprove your call extension if you use the wrong country. And I'm creating this in the UK, this is a UK based ad account and the default here is still United States, okay? So very important that you just go ahead and change this country to whatever, wherever it is that you're located. I'm just gonna enter in um, an example so that it lets us kind of go through the process. So the next thing we need to do is set up the conversion action. How are we going to track the people that actually call you via your call extension? Because that's really important for us to be able to see. It's also useful data in your Google Ad account that Google can then use to optimize your Google Ad campaign. So you can see the default is just calls from ads, um, but you can go one step further and really customize some of the stuff, exactly how these calls are tracked and, and what they what they mean within your ad account. Um, and that's something I'd recommend. So I'm gonna go ahead and click manage conversions and then go ahead and click on plus new conversion action. Obviously we want to select phone calls and then here it says select the source of the phone calls you'd like to track. Well, we want to track calls from ads using call extensions or call only ads. In this case, we're using call extensions. Go ahead and click continue. Then we can go ahead and give this a name. So we could just call this example call extension conversion. Um, then if you have worked out the value of each phone call, let's say for example, one in four phone calls you convert, your average customer is worth 800 pounds to you. Therefore, each call is going to be worth 200 pounds. You could run some simple numbers uh, and work that out. And then you can go ahead and enter in this information. And that's obviously going to be fed through into your reporting. So you can look at the results that this campaign or this call extension in this case um, produces. Okay. If you don't have a value for that action, you don't know the numbers, you don't know how valuable calls are. It's fine to not use a value, just useful if you do. So the next thing is count. When do you want conversions to be registered? Do you want it to happen every single time you receive a phone call or go with the one option, um, which is, you know, let's say you're a service-based business. If you're trying to generate leads, probably only that first call per person is actually a lead. The subsequent calls might be people asking about customer service, following up on stuff. You don't want to keep counting those as leads. That's going to mess up your reporting. So basically what Google recommends is that if you're after leads, signups, things like that, you go with one. If you're um, trying to generate purchases over the phone, then you go with every because of course, let's say someone calls up to purchase, you know, let's say you're a wholesaler, someone calls up to purchase today. If they call up again in two weeks time, pretty good chance that they're purchasing again. So that makes sense that you go with the recommendation there. Then we get into call length. So how long does a phone call need to go for it to count as a conversion? Now you can sort of have a think about this and try and work this out. Often you'll get a call and someone will ask if you offer a service or you have a certain product. And if your answer is like, sorry, no, we don't do that. 
that call's going to be really short, isn't it? It's only going to last 15, 20 seconds. And then if someone does that, they're not counted as a conversion. And that's a good thing because that person hasn't actually converted. 60 seconds is the default. That's usually okay. For some businesses, if you offer something that may be a little bit more complex and you're working stuff out over the phone with a prospect, you might want to extend that time period. We rarely go beneath that. But just know that that is the time period someone has to be on the phone for them to count as a conversion. Those short ones, we don't want that messing up our data. Then we get into click through conversion window. So obviously, how often do you want this conversion to sort of reset? So now we talked about every and one. Well, if someone calls today, let's say we've got one select. If someone calls today, um, there's a conversion for the first time, that's a conversion registered. If they call in three days time, that's not a new conversion because they're just probably following up. But if we don't hear from them for six months and they call again, that's probably a new conversion because they're probably now reinterested in the service. Um, so that's what this 30 days window is talking about. It's that time in which a conversion won't be uh, recorded again. So you can go 30 days, you can change that up. The default, again, is usually fine, but you can you can mess around with that. Then attribution model, um, I'm just going to recommend you go with the recommended setting of data driven. You'll see there are a few different options. Last click was often used before, but just go with data driven. It's absolutely fine. OK, then we click create and continue. And you can see we've set up this example call extension conversion. So if I click done, and now if we come back into the page where we're actually creating our call extension um, and we come under conversion action, we can now select our example call extension conversion um, from the menu, which is now going to track things according to what we want. And most importantly, I feel put in that value number, which is really useful for working out return on ad spend and numbers like that. OK, when it comes to call interaction bid adjustment, I wouldn't recommend when you're getting this started um, changing anything. But if you are finding over time that the leads that come through your call extensions, those that are call you, which is something that we do, I've already mentioned, we do see are really valuable that you can go ahead and increase the bid adjustment, basically saying I'm willing to spend more in order to get these things. So you can go ahead and enter a number in there and adjust it and, and, and play around with that. A bit more of an advanced thing, but something you can definitely do. Then we get into advanced options. And you can see that we can add in a schedule. So if I click on here, we can select certain days of the week and we can, I accidentally clicked on that, and we can select certain times of the day. Now, this is often recommended for call extensions because of course you don't want someone to call you and you not be available, right? You want to be make sure that someone is available to answer the phone. If someone's not, I would not recommend having a call extension on. So that might mean that, for example, you only want to have this call extension set up Monday to Fridays. And then in terms of the timings, you only want them going from, let's say, the classic example of nine to five. Okay, and you can, of course, change that depending on your business and when you're open and all that sort of stuff. But that is something that's going to be very, very common with call extensions and definitely something that I would recommend. Then what you need to do is go ahead and click save. And that's it. You've got your call extension created and obviously check back in on the data. See how this is performing. You may want to increase. You can increase, obviously, or decrease your bid adjustment, depending on how these are working. And I think you'll find that the leads that you get through call extensions, first, it's probably going to be more than you expect if you haven't been using call extensions so far. And secondly, they can be really high quality leads. So for just a few seconds work, a couple minutes work, let's say, well worth doing. OK, and then before you go, something I'll quickly mention, and that's my company's done for you Google advertising services. So we can create, manage and optimize Google ad campaigns for you. If that's something you're interested in, please click on the link in the video description below. That'll take you through to a page where you can book in a call directly with my team member. And we do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement. So please only book a call if you meet that. But if you do, great, go ahead and book that call, find out more, no obligation. Hopefully we get a chance to work together. And now that you've got your call extension set up, I'd strongly recommend that you also set up price extensions if you haven't done so already. Very easy to do, but can make a big difference to your results. I've got a tutorial here that walks you exactly through the process of setting up price extensions, including best practices, well worth taking a few minutes. Go ahead and check it out.